What if I were to tell you that your AVR does not support 5.2.4, 7.2.4, or 9.2.6 like you think it does? Well, in this video, I wanna share with you the misconception of the 0.1 channel. What's going on, guys? This is Youth Man. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. I produce two to three videos per week on home theater, audio and video. So if you're passionate about that stuff, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I produce weekly content that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Now, before we jump into the meat of this video, I want you to post down below in the comments what your current setup is. Do you have a 7.1 channel setup? Do you have a 5.1.4? Whatever that looks like, post it down in the comments below. Now, earlier in the week, I made a video that discussed what each one of those numbers means in a home theater configuration. So let's say you have a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos setup. That means you have five floor level speakers. So that's your front three and two surrounds. Point one is in reference to your subwoofer. And then the point two is your height channels or your Dolby Atmos DTSX or Oro 3D channels. Now in that video, I did make a comment mentioning that the point one, the second number, is in reference to the LFE channel, not the number of subwoofers that you have in your system. So for example, in my setup, I've got seven floor level speakers, two subwoofers, and four Dolby Atmos speakers. So the proper configuration describing my setup is a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup with two subwoofers instead of saying a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup. Now, one comment that caught my attention was from David. He says, great video, but the number for the sub isn't actually always technically 0.1. My amp has two separate sub channels, not split between one channel, two individual channels. So technically it's 0.2. However, a lot of amps do have two RCA outs that are shared. So what he's talking about there is on the back of his AVR, he has two subwoofer outputs. And those two subwoofer outputs are independent of each other. So he can go inside his AVR menu and adjust the levels for each one of those subwoofers. But he can also control like the distances for that. And then another comment right after that from Bernard says, I agree with you because mine also has two sub outputs driven separately. I don't understand when he says it's always technically 0.1. Well, guys, I'm glad you asked that question because it caused me to question, am I telling these guys correctly? Now, I always strive to provide the most accurate information here on this channel. And so I wanted to make sure I wasn't given inaccurate information so I reached out to two of my friends at Sound United. I reached out to Paul Wilkie as well as Phil Jones. Now, Phil Jones is just an incredible guy. He's got a huge, vast amount of knowledge, and he's been on several of our podcasts for the Hi-Fi Summit as well as Daily Hi-Fi. And so I received an email back from Phil, and here's what he said on this subject. While the front, center, and surround channels include full range information, Dolby and DTS content also includes an LFE or low frequency effects channel. The LFE is a dedicated audio track, which includes additional deep, impactful sounds ranging from three to 120 Hertz, which is normally sent to subwoofers. This is why surround channels are listed as 5.1, 7.1, 9.1, or 7.1.6. Regardless of the number of subwoofers in a room, with the possible exception of DTSX Pro, there is only one LFE channel. Phil goes on to say that note, the Dolby Atmos specification has one LFE channel. For example, 7.1.6, the new DTSX Pro specification has up to two LFE channels. For example, 7.2.6. The Odyssey built into our best AVRs have the ability to equalize two subs differently, but the signal is the same. If a user sets any speaker, front, center, and surround to small, that channel's base information is also sent to the subwoofer in addition to the LFE. Users also have the option via the AVR menu of sending base information from the left and right front channel to both the left and right speakers and the subwoofers. 
So in a nutshell, what Phil was trying to say is that current AVRs only have the ability to process a 0.1 LFE channel. So you technically cannot have a 7.2.4 or a 5.2.2 uh, Dolby Atmos setup in your home theater with the current AVRs. Now one reason I think this is kind of confusing for us consumers is the fact that if you were to go to Pioneer's website or Onkyo's website, Den on Rants and so forth, you'll see the receivers listed as 7.2, 11.2, 9.2, 13.2. So in our brains, we're thinking, okay, if I buy an 11.2 channel receiver, that means the 11 refers to the floor level speakers and the Atmos speakers or height speakers. So you should be able to do say a 7.2.4. So you got seven speakers, four Atmos speakers. So that's your 11. The 0.2 would be my two subwoofers, correct? That's actually incorrect. The 11.2 that they're referring to is the 11 speakers and two subwoofer outputs. But technically that receiver still cannot do a 7.2.4 configuration. But with the introduction of DTSX Pro, we will be able to process two dedicated LFE channels. Now, one thing I do want to find out is will those two channels be kind of like a stereo left and right subwoofer channel? Are they going to have different unique information, maybe just different frequencies? What does that really look like? So that hopefully I'll be able to cover in a future video. So if you want to have a true 7.2.4, a 9.2.6 setup or configuration in your system, you're going to need a receiver or an AVR or a processor that supports DTSX Pro. Now at the time of this video, the only ones that I'm aware of, there are processors like Trenov that support DTSX Pro. I believe they began to implement that into their processor via firmware back in January of 2020. Now at the time of this video, the only two manufacturers that are producing AVRs that support DTSX Pro are Denon as well as Marantz. Now I made a video recently on Denon's announcement of their new 2020 AVRs as well as Marantz's 2020 AVRs. And so if you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave links to them at the end of this video. Now both of those brands will offer some of their models with DTSX Pro, but that will come as a future firmware update. If you enjoyed the video, be sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell notification as I produce two to three videos each week on home theater, audio and video. Also consider joining the Youthman crew on Facebook if you wanna be a part of an exciting home theater community. And as always, God bless, and we'll catch you in the next video.